The Wacky World of Multimedia J. that's a thing of dental floss on my desk. I've had issues with forgetting to floss in the past, as you can tell, my dentist will be proud of me, but he might not be so proud of me for overdoing it on the Italian bread lately. Ay, 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 I'm gonna have to get the USB vacuum to get that cleaned up. Whatever. Oh my goodness, you live like a pig. Well, more like this desk has a lot of work in progress. <laughs> There is, however, still something on the desk that should not still be on the desk. This thing of G-Skill Rift Jaws, PC, whatever it is, 14,000 at this point? Those numbers got big a long time ago. <laughs> DDR3, 1866. This is 16 gigs of that crap, and it's the, it's the highest amount of RAM that Tuxedo supports at the highest official frequency. Yeah, the motherboard's from 2010. I know that we're into DDR4 territory these days, but, uh, yeah. I also gotta do some spring cleaning, so pardon the clutter. Part of that spring cleaning, I guess, can begin with cleaning the computer. So, let's start shutting this piece of crap down here. All the lights are on, because I'm probably gonna try doing this without going to the project area. Because Tuxedo will fit on the desk, I think. It fit on the desk at the old place, as long as it doesn't gain any weight. So this thing is from 2010, the processor is from 2010, the motherboard is from 2010, so is the RAM, by the way. Um, you hearing a pattern here or something? This thing has had more than a good run, and it more than deserves to have its RAM capped before we finally retire this darn thing. And just like that, we are out, we are completely unplugged, and yeah, there was a bit of a dust problem going on, but this thing's been uh, running close to the floor for the last couple of months. Also, one change that has improved already, this thing now closes again because this little Logitech thingy that I use for the couch keyboard, <laughs> so, that's what I'm calling it, the couch keyboard for the more living room-ish setup, that can now plug into one of the USB 2s on the back. Everything else can be cleaned up. Alright, time to take off this hack job thing. Hasn't been a hinge on there in a couple of, hasn't been a handle on there in a couple of, well, there goes one thumb screw. Where'd that sucker stop spinning? Yeah, we'll find it off camera. But anyways, so yeah, this the hinge is busted on this thing. I had to take off the uh, the little hinge or the little button that you push in order to take this thing off in order to fit the third party. No, not the third party cooling, but this thing. This thing is still apparently still in one piece. That's nice. A little bit of dust to blow out. But in order to fit a 140 millimeter fan against the back, I kind of had to uh, kind of had to give up having a little handle for that thing. Everything else still appears to be hooked up. The catch is to get at the RAM, we're gonna have to remove the fan that's on the third-party cooling. So first things first, blow the dust out. Hashtag nerd world problems. Plenty of dust cans, none of which still have the straw. Let's wing it. This isn't getting anywhere. One little straw makes all the difference. Or maybe it's just the case that there isn't a lot of dirt getting in here. Because we do have cyber clean that we can use for the stuff that's really uh, hard to get at. Yep. Nerd world problems. Yeah, it's, it's not working. Needs the darn straw, darn it. Epic fear. Well, there's our first casualty report. The RAM is in, but there's residue now on the heatsink. That is leftover CyberClean and hopefully doesn't impede the cooling too much. When this stuff starts liquefying and leaving a residue and making a mess, that's when you know it's done. <laughs> 
This became an automotive product not too long ago, and I guess the automotive one doesn't last as long as the old computer one did. I want the original stuff back, darn it! This blue stuff doesn't cut the mustard. So we're gonna be nuts enough to apply power to this thing. Uh, there are actually powers already applied, but hopefully with just passive cooling and this place having no heat going whatsoever, we can at least make sure that all the RAM properly detected. Otherwise, well, the power switch is right there in the power supply. Hope it doesn't cook. It's still overclocked. There's an alarm that goes off at 50 degrees on the die, though. Okay, how much RAM's being detected? Straight into the BIOS. I got 16 gigs, but it's only showing up as DDR3-1600, which means I might have to manually play with the timings in the RAM. Eh, uh, the timings in the BIOS. Yeah, this is so hard to work with. Uh, <laughs> okay, so we go into the BIOS, and then, uh, it is showing up there. It's just showing up as DDR3-1600. Can we get that up to 1866? Some... Oh no, that is the highest, that is the highest RAM ratio that it supports. So, in order to get 1866, now we have to overclock the FSB to get that up to 1866 and run the RAM at 1866 speed. Funny how that works. Well, let's, uh, at the very least, put it on auto for now. We'll play with that later because we've got some overclocking to test anyways. Speaking of which, this thing is still overclocked and it's being passively cooled right now. Let's not keep running it. <laughs> well, at the very least, let's not go into the OS. Just turn it off by pushing the button. Click. Disconnect the power. Oops, turn off the power supply too. Let's disconnect the power. I think some of these cables might be the reason why I'm getting some rattling noises sometimes when I first power this on in the morning. Uh, let's try stuffing this into there. Yeah, like that's gonna stay. <laughs> Anyways. Okay, so let's mount the fan back on... the heck? Oh, the chair's rubbing against the drawer. <sighs> yeah, well we can't have passive cooling on the processor, now can we? Let's remount the fan, put this thing back together. I did want to alcohol swab the sound card's contacts, but because uh, of some issues I'm having with the sound card, but we'll worry about the sound card later. I think it might actually have a wiring issue. I see metal! Um, well, if you're not obstru- if the camera's not obstructing it, look at that crap. We're gonna have to take that connector off later on. I think that's the old front bay connector. It's got metal showing through. Hmm, I wonder why the sound card keeps popping. <sighs> well, we could take it off while we have everything unplugged. Yeah, that sounds like a better idea. 2007? Well, no wonder there aren't any good drivers for this thing. <laughs> Didn't know this thing had gotten that old that quickly. Yeah, um, I used to have an I.O. shield for this, but I thought it would short against the video card because of the layout of everything, so I'm just trying to get through to the end with this thing with no I.O. shield on it, but that might be where some of the interference is coming from that I'm having trouble with, unless some of these capacitors are having issues. Either way, let's put this all back in, put everything back together, and start everything back up and see what we're going to do about those RAM timing issues, because that's 1866. That does give me some overclocking headroom, but I'll have to check and see if the motherboard actually supports that speed by some other way before I start screwing around with the FSB. Okay, alcohol the sound card, nothing on the contacts, so maybe there was some electrical issues from those cables that weren't in proper working order. So that's completely been disconnected, so I'm done with front panels on sound cards permanently after this. Next step will be to take this thing out and replace it with something else. Maybe my crappy Blu-ray drive that's been a plug-in drive for a while. Oh great, something's catching the fan. We'll see if that goes away when the computer warms up. <laughs> oh, brother. Okay, house lights have been brought way down and everything's been set to stock. 3.2 to 3.6. The RAM is at the highest multiplier that the motherboard supports, which is times 8. So it's at 1600. So since that's 1866 memory, I wonder if that gives me some overclocking headroom for the front side bus as well. There were some mentions in the memory supports of 1866 overclocked, so eh, we'll play with that. It's designed for 1866, it's got heat spreaders and everything, motherboard only goes up to 1600, probably can bring the FSB from 200 to 233 or something along those lines. But we'll do some playing with that later on. For now though, let's run all the benchmark tasks at tasks, tests at stock speeds. 
just to see what we can get for results, beginning with our good friend, Nova Bench. 3.2 gigahertz with 16 gigs of RAM, and still a faster RAM speed, even though it's not running at the speed it was made for. <laughs> This should be interesting though, because when I was messing around with FSV overclocking earlier, I wound up having to downclock the RAM because the 1333 would fire up way too high. Well, now it's definitely running, definitely not running past its limits. So we're at 1600 speed for now. I did run into some issues with the OS not starting at 1862 for, for an FSV overclock. So we're going to have to do some playing with that, see what we're getting here. 1300, 1400, 1500, and glare utilities. I should dump glare utilities when I run this stuff. 14, 15, etc, etc. Write speed to the hardware, which gives us our first Nova Bench score of 1269. So about in the same, about in the same area. So yeah, the amount of RAM you have actually contributes to the uh, the scores that you get. Let's upload this one. 581 at stock speeds, which is about right for the 1090T. Graphics score keeps tanking, so I don't know what the story is with that. I am in balanced mode, right? Yes, I am in balanced mode. <laughs> Alright, let's upload the score just as a starting point. The record is still 1382, but that was from Windows 7 with better graphics results. Well, it looks like the RAM transfer speed has gone up a bit, from just under 4 gigs to, you know, the 5s and whatnot. So that's gone up at least a bit. Hey, the processor's doing a tad better with it, too. Ay, ay, so that's a nice starting point. Unfortunately, the graphics tests are still weaker, from 600-something to 400-something. Let's play with some other benchmarks. Monster Hunter Online coming towards the end with the stock speeds and the increased RAM. I don't expect this to make much of a difference. Magic number, 7,500 I believe. Or 65, one of those two. That's what stinks. These two benchmarks were a thousand frames apart. Which, by the way, now I know that's what that is. That's a frame counter. How many frames can the thing push out when it goes through the exact same sequence? With the exact same stuff going on. There's the giant scorpion, and there's the valiant party about to engage the boss. Magic number is 7473. Nothing exciting at all. 34 FPS, minimum of 17.9. So still 1080-30 territory. Haven't tried any overclocking yet. Now let's move on to Final Fantasy. 14 Heaven's Word, the official benchmark. Let's benchmark this thing, darn it! Final Fantasy, looking pretty much the same. Probably gonna get up to around the 6500 mark. No big surprise, RAM isn't exactly a big booster to performance, except in high RAM applications. No big surprise whatsoever. So my question is, with this difference in what the motherboard can support and what the RAM can run at, what can I do with that FSB overclocking headroom in terms of ratio versus FSB versus thermals versus not going out of the electrical tolerances? This should be the end of it. We're going to score very high, aren't we? Ah, yes. 6429. Again, floating around the 6500 mark because RAM is only good in gaming if you have a game that'll gob up tons of it if it's available. Alright. As predicted, now we play with the overclocks that are available and try to find something that's at least somewhat stable. Okay, the FSB is up around 230-ish with everything else still on automatic. I haven't even touched any of the other settings, but everything is on automatic, and we're now at 1385, on par with the best score that we had in Windows 7. 630 for the CPU, 515 for the graphics. Let's add that to the roster. Don't know how stable it's going to be, but I've blue-screened this computer more times in the past two weeks than <laughs> ever. New minimum frequency, unfortunately, though, is 919 megahertz. Although this is pinging as a 3.7 gigahertz system because it's rounding up to 3.7 gigahertz. 
but everything's on automatic. I, you know, everything's still on automatic except for the FSB frequency. So, upping that has. <laughs> what are we running at? Oh, now we're back below. Well, of course we're below 20 degrees. It's only 900 megahertz, 1.22 volts. The point of this OC is to put it back into balance mode. The point of this OC is to retain the the uh, features of the processor while also be getting uh, bleh, getting able to get some uh, being able to increase the range in which this processor operates so it's just okay thanks glary it's just under 4 it's just under 3.7 gigahertz normal speed and it goes up to near to uh, <laughs> a little over 4.1 when turboing because of the higher fsb frequency but 1385, that is, I think, that's close to a new record, if not a new record. Yes, that is a new record. We have unseated the old one, despite the problems with Windows 10. But that's just Nova Bench. That's just a little 800 by 600 piece of junk sequence. Let's try some of the heavier benchmarks and see if everything blue screens. <laughs> Crash! It couldn't even start running Monster Hunter. <laughs> Let's turn down that FSB frequency. Epic fail. 226. This is the rough equivalent of what we had with the multiplier overclock at the old 1333 speed. Runs the RAM at 1808 megahertz instead of 1866, but at least it's not 1600. 2 gigahertz on the North Bridge and Hyper Transports. We will mess with the North Bridge if this is anywhere near stable. 3.6 to 4, except with the front side bus versus the multiplier on the processor. Let's play with this, shall we? Oh, look at this! Monster Hunter's working! <laughs> what is this sorcery, huh? <laughs> Let's see if it finishes, and see if the numbers have varied in any respectable way, shape, or form. Okay, looks like the... <laughs> looks like the benchmark is actually going to complete this time without blue screening. So here's what we'll do. I, um, I made that result for Nova Bench anonymous because it's not viable, it's not stable. So what I'll do is continue playing with these numbers, probably experiment with stuff that isn't too important in World of Warcraft, and then see if I can get it to where it doesn't crash anymore. And wherever it doesn't crash is where I'm going to use this stuff. There we go. There's our boss fight. I think we're going to hit around 7,500 again. Magic number is 7491, 34 FPS on average with a minimum of 18.6. I don't think this is really helping things very much. much. <clears throat> Why am I just now hiccuping when I had lunch like five hours ago? Whatever. It's gotta be this talking thing while leaning way back in a chair. Right, Final Fantasy time. Right. Looks like we're gonna end up in the same ballpark, despite overclocking everything, including the RAM. <laughs> well, the RAM technically isn't overclocked. It's actually running a little slower than its rated speed. <laughs> but it's overclocked from the motherboard's perspective. <laughs> I don't know if there's really any merit to, to what I've just done here, but at least the RAM is capped out. Yes, we are still very high, and we're still floating around the 6500 mark. Whoopty freaking do! <laughs> uh, you know what the stupid part is? My plans are to drop this thing back down to stock speeds when Monolith is built. Should I wait until Zen or go Skylake or whatever? Actually, I'll use the Tom's hardware charts to figure out what would be a decent step up from this 1090T that I have absolutely run completely into the ground. Let's do one last Nova Bench and then call it with this, because these settings will be the ones that I play with first until something crashes. Then I'll dial them back <laughs> until I can get this thing completely stable. 
I don't want to run Prime 95 for hours on end because I'd rather just use the system and then hopefully nothing crashes when I'm in the middle of something important in a game. But, uh, right. Alright, one last Nova Bench for the road and then we can call it with this setup. Okay, this one, if it's interesting, will be eligible to be saved. Minimum megahertz is now 900 instead of 800. I hope the extra 100 megahertz doesn't make this thing all that much less power efficient. Make sure we're in balance mode to not screw this up. Okay, good. All right, let's see what we have to play with here. Everything else that we need to close is closed. And by the way, the graphics card is overclocked at 125% with the EVGA Precision X tool. So just about everything here is getting pushed big time since there is a, a lot of nice third-party stuff. I'm just worried about cooking the motherboard though with this higher FSB. That's the only thing that's still stock. I also haven't messed with the Northbridge frequency yet. I suppose I should turn that up too. Well, all right, okay, we'll do two of these. We, I know that 2600 is too high for the Northbridge. Things stop booting around then, so we'll jack the Northbridge up after this. All right, um, I nulled that last result because it wasn't viable for everyday use. I don't want to be one of those people that like, hey, look at this benchmark, and then it's not actually usable for things like games and video editing and stuff. So let's run this, and let's uh, actually, this is at default 2 gigahertz Northridge, Northbridge speed, but I'm thinking of bumping that up to around 2400, 2500 later on, uh, 2.5 gigahertz-ish or so. Yeah, there's definitely a drop off the graphics capability now. <laughs> right speed, and what are we going to get here with an SSD and everything? 1378, so right behind the best Windows 7 results with the CPU now up to 630, graphics back to the 500 mark, and the RAM at 6300 you know, megs a second, which is higher than those. Okay, this is worth posting. Now we'll bump the Northbridge and see if this budges anywhere. Okay, Northbridge frequency at 11, or Northbridge multiplier at 11, putting it at 2486 megahertz. It's just funny, you know, seeing an overclock situation like this where I only turn up one number. <laughs> this is 226 instead of 200. <laughs> so that means the processor's normal speed is 3.6-ish, goes up to 4-ish just like before, except through a different method, not involving the multiplier. I'm actually defeating the purpose of having a 1090T now. <laughs> An unlocked multiplier, baby! And times 8, the highest the RAM can go is 1800-ish megahertz, but it's still not like 1600 or anything. <laughs> Maybe I should play with the timings next, but I need to make sure that this is stable first. So let's see what happens here. <laughs> Northbridge has been bumped, no crashes yet, and I certainly didn't get the errors from the motherboard that this system has experienced boot failures due to overclocking. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely a kind of a bonsai type moment here. Uh, yeah, but uh, the thing is, the mathematics and the AMD Zen are currently placing it between Haswell, I think Haswell and Broadwell, or Haswell and Skylake, or something like that. So it's not like it's going to be this amazing thing that takes back the crown from uh, Intel. It's going to come down to price, and in my case, the big thing I'm looking at with Monolith performance per watt. That's the kicker. Desktops are like driving big rigs around as your daily driver right now in terms of power consumption versus their mobile counterparts. I'm actually wondering what we, what's you know what we can do with you know laptops with graphics card boxes on USB three versus traditional desktops. That's another discussion entirely. What's the score? Fourteen hundred. It's a new record. If this is stable, we have finally, finally. Finally broken the 1400 mark, even though Windows 10's graphics performance on Nova Bench is gimped. Yeah, that's because the Phenom 2s had a thing for really, really responding to the Northbridge frequency being bumped. But I did not bump the Hyper Transport, it is still around 2 GHz even, but this is at 2.5 GHz on the Northbridge, so. 624, still pretty much the high-end CPU results we've been getting. 536, what's the, uh, you got around the 6, oh, 6 gig a second-ish? There are 6,000 megs a second for the RAM. But there it is. That is the new record. That is going on the profile. 
And I hope I don't have to dial things back. Ooh, look at that. It's actually registered at 3591 megahertz, but uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're looking for overall performance, particularly for gaming here. I think we found it. Uh, at least because the RAM turned out to be total overkill anyways, but we never hit 1400 with the old setup, that's for sure. I think this is a good place to end everything, and we'll just see how stable it is. If I get crashes, I'll continue dialing things back. Maybe that top-end turbo frequency would be a good thing to dial back first. But there we go. 1400 on Nova Bench. Finally! Let's call it here and actually have some fun this weekend. This is Multimedia J, signing off. Thanks for stopping by.